Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So today Insta360 has released a substantial update for the Insta360 app. It makes editing 360 footage even easier. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to reframe your video. Some people are a little apprehensive about maybe purchasing a 360 camera because they think it's complicated, but it's actually really easy. Insta360 has made the process very intuitive with many different features, including some AI editing that can do it all for you. So let's jump in here and we'll take a look. I'm going to launch the Insta360 app. Now when it comes to editing your 360 footage, there's two different ways in which we can do it. We can transfer the content over to our device, or we can edit right off the device, right off the memory card. And that can be beneficial because sometimes these devices have limited memory, or perhaps you've recorded a 20 minute video file, but you only want a 30 second segment to share to social media. You don't want to transfer that large file over. You just want a very specific small segment. So what I've done there is I've powered on the camera. If your app doesn't automatically prompt you to connect to the camera, what we can do is go over to album. You can see right now my album is empty because I don't have anything on this specific iPad, but we can select camera. Then there's an option there that says press to connect to camera. Right away, it's going to detect my X4 and I'm going to hit connect. We're going to join its Wi-Fi network. And now it's going to list all the content currently stored on the memory card. And as mentioned from here, we can go in and edit the videos directly off the camera or we can transfer them over. Now this is going to be a reframing video, so we're only going to be focusing on 360 video. And if you have a lot of content on your memory card, you'll be able to easily figure out which ones are in 360 and which ones are flat video if you've been using just the single lens mode. The 360 videos are going to be in a circle. You can see they're spherical, whereas content captured in single lens mode, in a flat video mode, you can see they're square. So I'm going to use this video here for this demonstration. It's basically me on my Teleria electric dirt bike. So we're going to download it to the device. And what I'm going to do here is select that check mark up at the top. That allows me to select what videos I want to download. So you can do multiple videos at once and they will download in the background. Once you have your videos selected that you want to transfer to your device, we're going to press this button here and that's going to trigger the download. It'll show us a progress bar right on the video. We can also click up here and it's going to show us a progress of all the downloads. So you can see here I've gone ahead and I've downloaded two clips and we're under the downloaded tab, but we can switch back to the memory card to the camera anytime by clicking on camera and that'll read the files off the camera again if you want to edit off the camera. Now, when we click on one of our 360 spherical videos to reframe it, you can see at the bottom here we get some tools and we get some tools here at the top. These tools at the top are the three different methods of which we can reframe. We can use Pro Mode, Quick Mode, or AI. They've all been enhanced with some new features. The AI has made some big improvements in scene recognition so it can help better determine whether you're on a motorcycle, travel, diving, different activities like that. And it does a much better job at highlight recognition. So it does a better job at making the auto edits using good moments. So we're gonna take a quick look at all three. So let's start with AI. Let's click on the AI tab. What we're gonna do is press this button here. What that's gonna do is get the AI to analyze the footage. And when it's done, it's gonna make an auto edit, but it's gonna also give us some options for editing and fine tuning. So you can see there it's gone ahead and made an auto edit. It's done some transitions, used both lenses. It's got some front facing views, some views of me. It's put me center in the frame. It's automatically done that. Now, if you're happy with it, we can go ahead and export it. We can just click that button here at the top and we have the option there. It says export to phone album and that's gonna save it to the album on your phone. But the other thing we can do is go back to the main edit. We can click this edit button and that's going to give, give us different themes. It's going to regenerate it, different music, different transitions. We can also click on this edit button here at the bottom. And that's going to show us all the clips that are in this AI generated video. We can go ahead and select each individual clip that it's chosen. We can adjust the length of it. We can trim the clip. We can make it longer. We can make it shorter. We can completely change the position and what's in the frame. If there's a clip in there we don't like, we can go ahead and delete it and we can change the camera movement. This is one of the new features and we can use this across the board for all the editing tools. You can see we have all different types of dynamic movements we can add. Like 
for example, I'm going to select this flip right. You can see how it rolled and it went from facing us to facing forward. So you can add some really nice transitions. Of course, you can do that manually with keyframes, but this takes all of the guesswork out of it. It just does it automatically for you. And it does a really good job. Now, the other thing the AI does here is it makes a series of clips. As you can see, if we click this button here on clips, you can see it's got some pre-made clips from different, different scenes throughout the video. And if we take a look at the top here, I don't know if you can see that on video, but it has it broken down. You can see it's detected that I'm riding. So it says riding forward view, riding highlights and riding partners. So it's picked up my friend that I'm riding with. In this AI generated video, there's three clips that it's using, but we can go through and we can add more. Again, we can adjust the duration. And then at this point, we just hit auto edit and that's going to update everything with the new clips. So that's a quick look at using the AI auto editing. It's a nice, simple way to share to social media if you don't want to spend a lot of time doing your own reframing. The next up here is quick editing. And in this mode, you can actually use some of the gyro information of your device to move the camera around. It's actually very intuitive how it works. On top of that, we have some other tools here, which we'll take a quick look at. Now in this mode, it's a little bit different. There's a couple different things we can do. We can adjust the aspect ratio. Right now we're in a nine by 16, but if you want a widescreen version, we can adjust that easily. And you can do that in all the modes, whether you're in AI, quick or pro mode. We can tap the screen to start playing it. We can pinch to zoom in and out. You can see if you want a more wider shot, we can zoom out, we can zoom right in. We can pinch until we go right to a tiny planet mode if you want that. Now in this mode, it's a little bit different because as you can see here, we have a record button. So in order to record the clips, we're gonna start recording. And as you can see, it's making a green line along the timeline there. And what we can do here is we can pick up the device. And as you can see, that's gonna change the reframing. And when you're done recording your clip, you just hit stop. And that's gonna add a clip to your clip gallery off to the side here. Now moving the device around doesn't work in every situation. Sometimes you want some more fine tuned control. So they actually give us some handheld tools that we can use and it works in the same manner. We can drag the timeline to put it to where we wanna start recording the clip. Again, we'll hit record. And from here, we can use this virtual joystick. And as you can see, we can move the camera around. We can get really creative with that. We can use our pinching gestures. There's a 360 option here that's going to do an automatic 360 around the scene. Shows us up at the top what viewpoint it's in. And we have a zoom tool. You can see we can zoom right in or we can zoom right out to a tiny planet. Again, when we're done, we just hit the stop button and it's going to add it to our clip gallery. And lastly, the other thing we can do is something called deep tracking. So let's find a position that we want to track. You can see we get this little green box right above our head. That means it's determined. It's picked up an object that is trackable. So we can hit that and we get this green box. So that's what it's going to be tracking. Again, we just hit record. And now it's going to be recording that segment while keeping me in the center of the video. When we're done, just hit stop. And again, it's added it to our clips. You can see we've made four clips here. We can go through and preview each one. We can delete each one if we don't like it. And if we're happy, we can click on export. When we click export, we get a couple different options. We can do a quick export. That's just going to export them right to the camera roll, each individual clip. We can export at 4K or we can hit create a video. And that's going to put all those videos in a timeline which we can go through and then edit. We can add transitions, change the speed, add music, and then export it once we're done our edit. But if you just want the clips, again, we'll hit export and we'll do quick export. And that's gonna go through and export each individual clip if you just want individual clips that you're gonna to upload to social media. So we've taken a look at the AI editing. We've taken a look at quick editing. Let's go over to pro editing now. Now, this is my preferred method when it comes to reframing my 360 video because it gives me the most flexibility. With pro mode, it gives us a lot of advanced tools and we can get really creative. 
Now, keyframing might sound a little intimidating if you've never done a lot of editing, but Insta360 has done a really good job making it intuitive and easy to use. Once you've done it a few times, you'll see just how easy it is. So here's our clip here, and again, we can scroll through the timeline. We can use our finger to move around to different viewpoints. We can zoom in, zoom out. Just like in quick mode, you can see we get this green box above my head. That means it's picked up a trackable item. So we can go ahead and track. You can see it's tracking us and where it's tracked us, it's putting like a dark green shade over the timeline. Might be kind of hard to see on video. We can stop tracking. So you can see in that section, it's kept me in the center of the video. Now we can do some editing to the tracking that it's just done. We can click on that green shaded area. You can see it gives us an option to delete it. There's a little garbage can there if we want to get rid of that tracking information. We can change the field of view. We can go to a tiny planet, mega view, ultra wide, or we can use de-warp if you want to get rid of all the distortion. Give it a more traditional fixed frame video look. But for now, let's go ahead and I'm going to delete that. But let's take a look at keyframing. So to start, we're gonna position the camera to the frame that we want. We can use our pinch to get the right aspect, the right zoom level, I should say. And then we're gonna click on this plus button and that's gonna add a keyframe. So the camera is now locked in that position. And as we move along, say we wanna zoom in a little bit, maybe to that position we now click on the plus sign. And again, that's now gonna lock that camera, all that information into that keyframe. So as we go back, you can see we're zoomed out. And as we slowly move to the next keyframe, it's zooming in. Now at any given time, we can go through and delete these keyframes just by selecting them. You can see it turns to an X. We can just tap on it, that's gonna delete it. Now another thing, important thing to note is that if you need to update a keyframe, change the camera angle, all we have to do is highlight the keyframe just by moving above it. You can see we can move the camera to a different position. But what we have to do is hit update the keyframe. That's going to update the camera information, the field of view, all that information is gonna be updated in that keyframe. So again, we can go to this keyframe. We maybe want a front view there. All we do is now hit the update keyframe. So if we go back now and play that, you can see we have, you can see the camera is going to spin here because we changed it from front view to back view. And then it's going to come back around and face me again. And the speed at which it will rotate around is basically dictated by how close these keyframes are to one another. And we can zoom in and out to make these keyframes a little bit easier to access just by pinching. I'm going to delete this keyframe. I'll just show you how we can speed that rotation up. So at this keyframe, you can see I'm in view there. But what we're going to do is just move along the timeline a little bit. I'm going to rotate the camera. We'll add a keyframe. And because those keyframes are much closer together, you can see the camera is going to spin around a lot faster. So it really just depends on what kind of transition you want. Now there are a ton of other editing tools within the app. I'm not going to go over all of them and we can access them by clicking this button here. You can see it gives us a list of all the tools that are available to us. We can add music, adjust the volume. We have speed tools. We can create a freeze frame effect, different filters and things for adjusting the color. Some interesting ones here that you should be aware of is that we have one called reset edits. Say you've made a whole bunch of keyframes, but you're just not happy with what you've done, you want to start over. We can click on Reset Edits, and that's going to delete everything and put it back to the way it was. Now, I want to show you another interesting tool that they've added. You can see when we click on one of our keyframes, we have this new movement tool, and this allows us to easily add really dynamic transitions, things that used to require a lot of editing, we can now just do with a simple tap of a button. They've got all different ones we can choose from including advance, which gives us some really interesting effects. Let's do this flip right. You can see what it does there. It goes from facing me to facing a front view. So you can add some really cool dynamic movements. You can see where it's added the transition. It's got this blue highlighted area and we can actually drag the handles 
from the front and back to set the duration. So if you want it more of a quicker flip, But we can also do it the other way. We can have it drag out a little longer. So that's just a quick look at three different methods of reframing your 360 video. It's extremely easy to do. So if you've been on the fence about picking up a 360 camera because you're a little worried it's going to be complicated, as you can see, it's a lot of fun and very easy to do. And as mentioned, you don't have to make those decisions out in the field on your framing and aspect ratio. You can do that later on in the comfort of your home while editing. Well, folks, that's basically it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it had value. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and we'll see you in the next one.